Steelers. You are welcome to another series of our weekly online chemistry classes by your regular anchor, Seri Uh Today, we are going to be discussing naming of cyclic compounds as well as aromatic organic compounds. But before we go there, in our last uh, edition or series, we actually talked about how to name organic compounds containing other functional groups, other than hydrocarbons. We considered naming of alcohols, acanamides, acanamines, among others. Today, I want us to first of all look at the situation whereby you are given the name of the compound and the examiner or the questionnaire asks you to write the structural formula of such compound. How will you go about it? Let us take an instance where you have a compound of N ethyl, N methyl, 2, 3 dichloro, 3 hydroxy. Okay? And assuming we have 4, 4, 6 trimethyl, okay, 5 ozo. At uh, six in a mic. How will you write the structure or the structural formula of this organic compound? This is very straightforward. The first thing you should look for is the parent name. And the parent name of this compound is ethinamide. Ethinamide. Meaning the compound has seven carbon atoms with an amide functional group and containing a double bond at carbon six. So, assuming we are writing a straight chain of seven carbon atoms, three, four, five, six, seven. On the carbon one, we have the amide functional group. Okay, on carbon six, one, two, three, four, five, six, there is a double bond. Meanwhile, on the carbon five, we have an O2, that's a carbonide group. One, two, three, four, five, there is a carbonide group here. On carbon 4, there are two methyl groups, and on carbon 6, there is another methyl group. So this carbon 6, you have a methyl group here. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is carbon 4. There are two methyl groups attached to this carbon. On carbon 2 and 3, we have chloro, chloro, chloro. Likewise, on carbon 3, there is a hydroxy group. Okay, so on the nitrogen of the amide, on the side chain of the nitrogen, we have an ethyl group, you have CH2, CH3, and you have a methyl group, CH3. All next, what you need to do next is to look at each carbon atom. Each of them must be surrounded with four covalent bonds. This is complete, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, there are three bonds attached to this carbon, meaning you have one more hydrogen. On this carbon, 1, 2, 3, 4, complete. 1, 2, 3, 4, complete. This is also tetravalent in nature. 1, 2, 3, 4, this is balanced. Here, yeah, there are two more hydrogen required for this carbon to obtain its tetravalency. So this is the structure, plant formula of the compound. As a typical example, in a case where you have a compound given to you in form of name, and you are asked to write the structural formula of such compound. That is much more straightforward. Now, going to the business of the day, and that is how do we name cyclic organic compounds? The word or the cyclic organic compounds are organic compounds containing carbon atoms in ring form, usually in ring form. It might be carbon only, it might be carbon and other heteroatoms like oxygen, nitrogen, as well as sulfur. But our focus today will be on organic compounds in ring form contain carbon atoms only in the ring. Now, the simplest members of those series of organic compounds are the three member rings and so on and so forth. So we have something of this nature. You call this triangle, but in chemistry it is not a triangle. Every angle of this ring is a carbon atom. So here you have one, two, three. You can as well write the structure of this compound in this format. Carbon, carbon, carbon. So meaning on this carbon, there are two bonds attached to it. There are two more hydrogen atoms. Likewise here, 
tumor hydrogen atoms. Likewise here, tumor hydrogen atoms. Remember, when we discussed skeletal formula in our previous edition, I told you that carbon and hydrogen in stick formula are not usually displayed. The same thing is applicable to cyclic compounds. The compounds we also refer to as a recycling. It's not compulsory you display or show the carbon and hydrogen atoms in the molecule. So this is well acceptable. We call this cyclopropane. When it is four membrane, cyclobutane. Five membrane, uh, cyclopentane. Six, in form of hexagon, you have cyclohexane. When it is seven and more, look at this. Assuming you have something of this nature. Okay, you have something of this nature. How many common atoms are here? Let's count. Starting from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that is, okay, is it 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That is cyclodecay. Decay, because there are 10 common atoms in the ring, and so on and so forth. Now, when you are naming compounds like this, the, site, the specific cycle must be written before the name of the compound. Now, what determines the parent name of the compound is the number of carbon atoms in the ring, as we have it in this formula. I want us to take a look at a compound of this nature. Assuming you have this compound, we are looking at hydrocarbons only. Okay, you have something like this, and you have something like this. How will you name this compound? Now, the major problem is, how will you know the direction you have to follow in order to give you the actual name of the compound, okay? This compound has five-member ring. It's a five-member ring organic compound. There are five carbon atoms in the ring. One, two, three, four, five. Now, we have five alkyl groups as substituents on the ring. If we make this our carbon one, it means we have to go this direction. Going clockwisely, will give us higher numbers for the position of the substituent. So if you go this way, this will be 1, 2, 2, that will be 5, then 3, 3, 6 plus 5, 11. Okay? If we make this our carbon 1, this will be 1, 1, making 2, 2, 2, that's 4 plus 2, 6, 3, that's 9. 9 is less than 11. So this position has nullified this. If we make this our uh, uh, initial carbon atom, carbon 1, and we go this direction, this 1, 1, 2, 2. That will be 6. 1, 1, 2, 2 will be 6. 3, 4, 5. 6 plus 5 is level higher than 9. If you go this way, you are going to have the same arrangement. So meaning, this must be our carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the name of the compound, you have a methyl group, a methyl group, a methyl group, a methyl group, and an ethyl group. Alphabetically, ethyl should be named before methyl. So in this case, we have 2 ethyl. Okay, then we have 1, 1, uh, 2, 3, tetra, methyl, cyclopentane. Cyclopentane. Another typical example is when you have something of this nature. You have here, okay, let me write it in the, no, CH2, CH3. And here you have CH3. Here you have uh, an ethyl group. Here you have a methyl group. Uh, ethyl group. Okay. And here you have uh, okay CH2, C, CH3, CH3, CH3. Okay, now looking at this compound, it's still an hydrocarbon and of course an alkene. No double bond, no triple bond, no other functional group. But we have several alkyl groups attached to it. This alkyl group is a butyl, but the alkyl group is linked to the ring on the second, second carbon atom. So this is a sec butyl. Sec butyl. I've taught you that. Now, if you look at this, this particular substituent has three carbon atoms on the straight chain and on the carbon two. So meaning, if we are to start our numbering, starting from here, we have to consider the position of the substituent. 
If we make this our carbon one and we go this direction, this will be one plus two, two, five plus three, that's eight, four, five plus five, thirteen. If we make this our carbon one and we go this direction, we are still going to have the same thing. One, two, two, five plus three, eight plus six, thirteen. If we make this our carbon one, 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 two, that will be four plus four, eight plus six, fourteen. Meaning, it's either we make this our carbon one or this particular carbon, carbon one. Now, which one will be the correct one? We have to consider the position or the alkyl group to be named first. And the alkyl group to be named first here, this is an ethyl group. This is a butyl, sec butyl. Okay? This is, an ethyl, this is a methyl. Why this particular one is a, 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 a propyl with two alkyl groups attached to the second carbon atom. So this is carbon one, two, three. This is carbon one, two, three. This is also carbon two. So given the IO pack system of naming for this compound, we are going to have one, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So on carbon one and two, we have ethyl group. So we are going to have one, two, diethyl. Okay, after ethyl, we have propyl here. We also have propyl here, going by IU pack system of naming. Propyl here, propyl here, methyl here, methyl comes next. This is 2 methyl. Okay, then here we have uh, 5. Then 1 methyl propyl. Okay, don't forget you can also name this. Instead of 1 methyl propyl, it's sec butyl. Is allowed? Okay, on carbon 3, we have 3. Then we have. 2, 2, dimethyl, propyl, okay, propyl what? Cyclo, uh, cyclohexane. That's the name of the compound, cyclohexane. Let's look at other examples. This time around, if you have, or if what you have is not just an alkane, a cyclic alkane, Assuming you have something of this nature, um, okay, double bond here, triple bond here, then here you have an ethyl group, then here you have a methyl group. Of course, this compound, don't forget, in the order of priority or functional group, double bonds has higher priority over triple bonds. So th that means the numbering of this compound must start from the carbon that bears the double bonds. And this is an ethyl group. Why this is a methyl group? So in that case, this must be our carbon one, two, three, four. So the name of this compound is one ethyl, two methyl, what? Okay, cyclo boots. Because there are four carbon atoms in the ring. But what was the position of the triple bond? Three, I, okay, then, one in cyclo boot three one i one in that's the name of the compound now in a situation when you have the side alkyl group having more carbon atoms than the number of carbon atoms in the ring the ring might become a substitute in any such compound let's take for instance you have something of this nature Okay, you have something of this nature. Uh, good. Then you have chloro here, bromo here. And here, assuming there is a double bond here, there is another double bond here. So that means this has to go. Let's put a bromo here, a chloro here. Okay, so here, assuming there is a methyl group, there is an ethyl group here. And there is a iso an isopropyl group there. Okay. Now on assuming on the cyclic range, you also have something of this nature. How do you name this compound? Now, if you count the number of carbon atoms on the side chain, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
If you count the number of carbon atoms in the ring, okay, assuming, let me have more, making eight, we have six here. In this kind of compound, this will now be named as a substituent. So we give more priority to the side chain. Now, how do we start? Which carbon will be our carbon one? Looking at the side chain, this is carbon one, the first carbon from the side chain, and this is also the first carbon. So if we go from this direction, don't forget there is a double bond, two double bonds, and their positions are very paramount. Meaning this must be our carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, in this case, the carbon that is linked directly to the uh, parent chain from the ring is your carbon 1. So this must be our carbon 1. Now, the direction you are going to follow will now be determined by the substituent attached to the ring. Now, if you go clockwisely, this will be 2, 3, and 5. The two alkyl groups are, two, are of carbon 3 and 5. If you go anti-clockwisely, it will be, I mean, yes, anti-clockwise, or clockwisely, anti-clockwise, you still have 3 and 5 as the positions of those two methyl groups. But assuming this methyl group is here, definitely you have to follow this direction. So whichever direction you follow, the position of the methyl groups remains the same. So how do we name this compound? Alphabetical order. This is a bromo, this are chloro, this is isopropyl or one methyl ethyl group. Then this is an ethyl group, then a methyl group. Bromo first, we have six bromo, six, okay, five, six, dichloro, okay, then ethyl, we have three ethyl, after that, we have the methyl, we have cyclo, cycloexyl. So that must come before ethyl. The cyclo must come before exyl. How do we name that? On carbon 1, 1, okay, 3, 5, dimethyl, mm -hmm, cycloexyl. Then we now have ethyl group, 3 ethyl. What again? We have methyl, we have isopropyl. So this is 4 isopropyl. Uh -huh. Then we have 2 methyl. Don't forget, I told you that this isopropyl can be named. Look at this carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 2. So on carbon 1, there is a methyl group. You can name it as 1, I mean, yes, 1 methyl ethyl. That's the same thing as cyclo, I mean isopropyl. So after two methyl, what do we have next? Then the parent name of the compound, eight carbon, oct, what? Okay, that will be octa. Octa two four diene. So that's how to name a uh, cyclic compound, cyclic hydrocarbons to be precise or alkylate. Now let us consider something of this nature. When you have the carbon bearing the functional group of an organic compound not being part of the ring, then the ring system is named as either cycloalkane or cycloalkyl group. Why the functional group on it, the carbon that bears the functional group, will not bear the name of that particular functional group. Like in this case, we have some typical examples. Let me use something like this. You have COH. This carbonyl group, which carries the functional group, is not part of the carbon atoms in the ring. So this compound is either named cyclopentane, pentane what? Carba, carbo, uh, this is analdehyde, carbaldehyde, carbal. Carbal the ice, or you name it cyclopentyl, pentyl what? Methana. Don't forget that methana is also known as formaldehyde. That's the old name. So cyclopentyl, carbal the ice. When you have something of this nature, you have something like this. C O O H. This is cyclopentyl. Carboxylic acid. Okay? When you have it in this format, 
when you have it like this, if you have another functional group, okay, I think this will make it easier for us. So in our next episode or series, where in case you have questions or compounds unable to name, you can quickly send me a, a message on my uh, YouTube account or send text message or WhatsApp message on my empty and display on the screen. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you again. You're welcome.